Hi, Paul from In 60 Days um, training course for the CCNA. So if you haven't already, please click on the uh, subscribe button and the bell so you get all the other videos for this course and the other courses I'm uploading. Today is day eight and we're covering CDP and LLDP. Some days are really hard going, for example, OSPF and VLANs. Other days such as today are quite easy. So I recommend you spend the time uh, going over yesterday's video and the other tasks that I'm going to mention. So every day read the cram guide, um, review the day before, watch uh, the videos, do the labs, take the online exam, the link is in day zero and day one, do some subnetting on subnetting.org or on my um, 101 labs um, book if you've got it. So we're covering Cisco Discovery Protocol and then it's uh, closely related to LLDP, Link Layer Discovery Protocol. So these are in the exam and um, you're guaranteed to get a question or two about them, maybe even a lab. So the two books I recommend you use for your subnetting are here, 101 Labs IP Subnetting and there's a book IP Subnetting from Zero to Guru or there's a video course, I put it on YouTube actually. If you want to have a look for that, that will teach you all your subnetting. All right, so that's enough from me. I will see you tomorrow. Welcome to our presentation on CDP and LLDP. The exams for CCNA have always featured something about CDP. It's one of those topics that people tend to take for granted, skip over and then regret it come exam day because there's either theory questions or even a lab uh, based upon it. Now, the new thing is LLDP, which Cisco have added to the syllabus. So you've got to pay special attention to the new stuff that's been added, A, because it's new, and B, because it's probably more likely to be included in the exam as opposed to the stuff that's been in there um, for years over and over again. So CDP is Cisco Discovery Protocol. Cisco actually created this because they spotted a, um, a gap in the market or a need for this type of protocol. It works at layer two, uh, Cisco, as I said, it's proprietary to Cisco, so you can't use CDP with non-Cisco devices. They could try and catch you out with that type of question. It's there to discover neighbor devices, directly connected neighbor devices, so it can't um, discover devices that are two or three hops away. You don't need an IP address. There's a bit of a myth here that you need to configure IP addresses. You do need to have the interfaces no shutted. Depending on the device you have on platform, some, um, for example, router interfaces connected to a switch, you normally need to no shut the router interface in order for the communication to take place at layer two, but you wouldn't need to add the IP address. Enable by default. Do check this for your platform and your iOS levels because things get turned on and then get turned off again or vice versa depending on platforms and iOS releases. CDP output, uh, I think I'm connected to the middle switch here and I'm just using Packet Tracer just to uh, demonstrate the commands. I've issued the show CDP enable command on um, you can see on the uh, switch uh, in the middle it can see using the local interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 Capability is S, which looking at the key above it is switch. The platform, you can see it's a 2960 and the uh, remote interface. And then underneath that, you've got a router and you can uh, see that CDP discovered it's a 1900 series. Now you can actually tag the detail command onto the end. That will show you a lot more information. You can normally see iOS versions, um, capabilities again, uh, duplex, advertised versions of CDP and so it's a lot more powerful and there's more iOS information there also. So show CDP in neighbours detail a note. If you don't live in the USA it's the US spelling so there's no U in neighbours for this uh, output. Now CDP is a security risk so they could ask you about CDP later on in switch or router security sections or questions in the exam. Disable on edge devices. So maybe you run it in the courier network depending on your security uh, rules and procedures. Disable it on edge devices going out to the internet or other providers or other networks. 
If you want to disable CDP on the entire device, the command is no CDP run. That will disable it. If you just wanted to turn it off on a particular interface or interfaces, the command is no CDP enable, and that would disable it on just on that interface. Uh, show CDP, you can see some basic in, uh, information about the packet sent and hold time and version. Uh, underneath of it should show CDP interface and then an interface name and you can see interface specific details. You can debug CDP, debug CDP packets and events in this particular debug and you can see some information has been produced from the uh, debugs there. Try it for yourself on your own equipment. Obviously your output will be different if you're using pack Packet Tracer, so just bear that in mind. Moving on to LLDP, Link Layer Discovery Protocol. This is the vendor neutral uh, version. I'm not sure if Cisco had any input in it, but it's there for discovery neighbors. Now it's enabled by default. I've read documentation that it's enabled by default on the Cisco 2960 switch, for example, which is the one you're tested on in the exam. However, when I tested it on the 2960 switch, it was actually uh, disabled. So um, again, it could be the iOS version possibly or something else, but uh, check on your device. Information gathered, there's a fair bit of information which you can see here. Uh, any management address that's been configured on the switch. Physical information, the uh, power, link aggregation also. This is what I mentioned earlier, the Cisco Feature Navigator. Just Google the term is the quickest way. It will let you search by feature or a technology type. I um, did a search in the little box for LLDP and you've got LLDP on its own or various other subsets of that particular uh, protocol, for example, for IP version 6. Now, um, underneath that box, when you've chosen the technology, you can ch choose train release or platform. I clicked on platform and you can see that the lowest level of platform that the LLDP is um, configured to support is the 1905 uh, series. Uh, presuming that's a router, I'd have to check actually. So I was checking for my Cisco 1841 routers, which I've got on my remote rack and it's just not in the list so that tells me then it's probably not supported after that if you click on whatever your particular platform is for example the 1921 you can then look in the right hand um, fields that are populated and it will tell you which image you need for example here uh, at the bottom it's the 15.43m train and um, the platform for 1921 and the universal image. It also tells you how much DRAM and flash you'll need for that particular image. So this is often done uh, by the Cisco sales representative who has a big long list of the technologies you need to support on your network. They recommend the devices and how much memory you need and if it's supported or not. Low, the lower level devices are, is obviously going to support a lot less uh, protocols and technologies. Now configuring LLDP, globally it's LLDP run. If you just want to enable it on an interface, it's LLDP transmit stroke receive. Now the paradox here is I've tested this on packet tracer, so you can't actually um, say this is how it'll be on live equipment, but um, the LLDP transmit receive command worked on an interface. However, it didn't work, um, it didn't send any information until I issued the LLDP run command which enables it globally. So that's a little bit frustrating. So do check if you have access to live equipment, if that, um, if you have the same experience. So issued on the middle switch there, show LLDP neighbors. It's telling me LLDP is not enabled. Now the documentation says it is enabled by default. So there's the first issue. So I went into config mode, issued LLDP run, and then exit out and show LLDP neighbors. No neighbors were discovered at this point in time. So I went down to a router in the bottom, bottom of the diagram there. No shit the gigabit interface. And um, show LLDP on the switch there. Uh, show me it's active. Uh, it took 30 seconds for the top switch to um, the interface to come up. And I also had to configure the LLDP run on the top switch. Again, the documentation says it should have been on there 
um, enabled by default. But there you go. And you can see we've got the same sort of input that we output that we do have with their CDP. So it's telling us our device ID, local interface, remote um, ID as well. Packet Tracer doesn't let you uh, dig into any detail. So if you wanted to do that, you're going to need to probably use a live device or GNS3. The only issue is that you need to have a device in GNS3 that supports LLDP and the correct iOS. So you've got a couple of little challenges there. Otherwise, I think this is enough that you need to know for the exam. Look over the Cisco documentation. It's, it's fairly light and there's only a couple of other commands that are mentioned and they're fairly, um, fairly rarely used, I'd imagine. So that's all we've got to say on um, CDP and LLDP. Make sure you do the labs and obviously um, bear in mind the security issues when you've got them enabled. Thanks for listening. All right, welcome to our LLDP lab or CDP and LLDP. I think we're covering here. I'm just using Packet Tracer, so I'll drag a 2960 to the middle, one to the top and a router to the bottom, just so we can see a couple of different devices. Obviously switch to switch, ideally choose the uh, crossover cable there, otherwise you have problems, straight cable, switch to router, gigabit zero slash zero, not that it matters which interface, you just um, remember to no shut whichever interface you've connected to on the uh, router there, and by default the interfaces will stay down on the routers. All right, so interface uh, zero slash zero, no shut. That will take uh, about 30 seconds to come up. Uh, go from red to green on the switch interface there. We've gone to green. So we'll go to the middle switch and then start looking at a few different commands. Obviously from a user mode to privilege mode, show CDP neighbors. And you can see automatically uh, we've got two neighbors showing. There's a key up there for router switch and other devices. Uh, device ID, local interface, whole time, uh, platform and remote port ID. So you can see what the entries we have here for the remote switch, which is a 2960. Here, and then the uh, remote. The remote router there, you can see the local interface, remote interface, and the capability is R for router. You can drill into more detail if you issue the show CDP neighbors detail command. You can see um, platform, again more information on the interfaces, your iOS versions, full details of the model. If you've got management IP addresses I think they come up as well but I don't have any configured here at the moment. So more detailed output, duplex type also on the interface. All of this is without any IP information having been added because it's a layer 2 protocol so don't need to worry about it. Show CDP interface is another command. We've only got a few limited commands because it's Packet Tracer. And we can see how often it's sending the CDP packets and hold time. Now we'll go on to the router at the bottom and no CDP enable is the command on the interface level. So this is if we just want to disable it on an interface. The entry will stay until um, we clear the CDP table. Now um, it's got, it, it takes a while for the table to uh, repopulate itself and again it could be a problem with Packet Tracer just having a little bit of a glitch in there.
and you can see the table still isn't uh, populating. Looking at the interface, CDP is running, so that's all OK. And then I hit the up arrow and there's an entry in there. So I'm not sure whether me looking at the interface triggered it or I just had to wait for the CDP packet to be sent because it's only every 60 seconds. No CDP run, disable CDP on the entire device. And then you can see that CDP is not enabled when you do any show um, CDP commands. Now show LLDP and you can see it's not enabled. Now the documentation says it is enabled by default on the 2960. So it could be an iOS or it could be a packet tracer thing. Show LLD, LLDP neighbors and there's nothing there. So what we need to do is go to our other devices and actually enable LLDP. So conf t LLDP run, that enables it on the uh, whole device. Obviously no LLDP run will disable it on the entire device. Okay, so we can see our switch here. We're going to need to do the same thing on the router at the bottom and uh, enable it. LLDP uh, transmit and receive commands if you want to enable it per interface. Now something strange happens when you do this the commands say it does enable it on an interface however um, it still needs to be enabled on the entire device so that's a little bit strange that um, enable it on the interface doesn't just enable it on the interface because you may only want it to run on a particular interface so LLDP run enables it on the entire device which kind of negates the need to enable it on the interface could be a packet tracer thing. I don't have the uh, live devices to hand to test it. So we can see all of our output here. Everything's working fine. Show LDP, neighbours, and um, yep, that's all we need to know. So thanks for watching.